A place to be, to ground your words. A place that is secured for the rest of mine. No other place but burial schools. Burial schools is the best. Good morning, students at home. How are you doing? I hope you are healed and happy. You're welcome back to our e-learning class on economics. For this week, the topic we'll be treating is population. Population on the board. And of course, the lesson is for SS1. As you can see on the board, we have penned down the meaning of population. And population here means the total number of people living within a particular geographical area or country at a particular time. Population is the total number of people living within a geographical location or country at a particular time. You must have treated this topic in your uh, subjects like social studies and so on. Now we are treating it in economics. Now, what are the factors that determine population growth or size? Determinants of population growth or size. Number one. Okay, let me say that these factors are broadly categorized into three. The first being the birth rate, also known as fertility or natality rate. And then the second one is the death rate also known as mortality rate. And then the third factor is um, migration. So let's start with the first factor, which is the birth rate. What is birth rate? Birth rate simply refers to the rate at which uh, children are being given birth to in a particular country. The rate at which children are being given birth to in a particular country. In other words, the frequency, the frequency, the, the number of occurrences of childbirth in a particular country simply defines what is called birth rate. Now, what can make the rate of birth to increase? That takes us to factors affecting birth rate. All these are determinants of population growth. Now, the first factor that affects birth rate is early marriage. Early marriage. You discover that if you go to a country where people marry early, that country will have the tendency to be highly populated. True or false? You know the answer to that. So, when people marry like what used to be in those days where our parents married as teenagers, you discover that the rate at which population was growing was geometric. It was very fast. So early marriage can make population, can affect population uh, growth positively. Another factor that affects population growth in terms of birth rate is desire for large families. We are in a traditional or let me say African society, where it is believed that the larger your family, the more you are respected as a true African. True or false? Aha. And you see in some villages, people are given chieftaincy titles just because the man has, has so many children, and in fact has a community of children. Uh, it is said in one particular uh, local uh, community that a man had so many children that he could not recognize all of them. And in fact, his children were used to make up the community. His children were the pillars of the community. So you see, he became the chief of that village as a result of having so many children. So, number three is religious belief. Some religion, especially the Islamic religion permits 
or encourages men to marry more than one wife. And you know the result. The result is that all the women that are married to this man will expect to have their own children. Unlike a monogamous marriage where the man is satisfied with one wife and with the four or three children that the woman gives birth to. But if the man marries more than one, the second wife will be envious of the first wife who has up to three children. She will want to have her own, maybe in order to have more re relevance or regard, she may want to have up to four or five. And the third wife, will it will be a competition of children. So this can make the birth rate in a particular country to increase the population of that country. And then number four, the age distribution of the country's population can also be another factor that, will, that affects the birth rate in that country. When we talk about age distribution, we are looking at uh, the range at which certain age groups are classified. For instance, 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, up to 100. Now, if the age distribution is predominantly uh, about people of reproductive age, that is from 15 to 35, if we have more populated people in this age distribution, definitely there will be more reproduction because this age of people are more fatal than people of 50 and above and they are also uh, productive compared to people of 5 to 10 years. Let's look at the fifth one which is improved medical services. In a country where you have improved medical services, you will hardly experience cases like still birth. Still birth simply means a situation where the mother puts, gives birth to a dead baby, a baby who didn't survive in the womb. So, improved medical conditions can help to avoid this occurrence. And what will happen, it means that people will be giving birth to healthy babies that are alive. That means that the birth rate will be high. Thus, the population will also increase. And then the fifth, the sixth one is polygamous marriage. Like I explained earlier, under religious beliefs. The type of marriage that is predominantly practiced in a particular country will also determine how high the population will be. For instance, if it is a country that everybody is allowed to marry more than one wife, definitely the birth rate in that country will be high, which will also jack up the population uh, size. And then number seven, improved standard of living. By improved standard of living, we simply mean that the economy is good, the level of hardship is low, people can afford to provide for the children they give birth to. Now, if you know that you can afford for, you can afford to cater for as much as 10 children, if you know that you can afford to cater for as much as 10 children, you will not think twice about having up to that number, true or false. But if you know that you cannot cater for even five, you won't even think of uh, giving birth up to that number. You will want to manage your resources. So you may limit the number of children you have to two or three so that you can uh, effectively take care of them due to the uh, the level of standard of living. And then we are done now with the A part, which is birth rate. Now let's look at other factors or determinants of population growth, which is death rate this time around. This one tends to affect population negatively. Birth rate affects population positively. It means 
it takes population to the high side on the increase. But this one reduces population. That's how it affects population. This refers to the rate at which people die in a particular country. The rate at which people die. The frequency, the tendency at which people die is known as death rate. Death rate is also known as mortality rate. Mortality means the tendency to die. Immortality means the tendency to live for a thousand years or more. Uh, factors that affect death rate are one ratio of males to females you will agree with me that one man can reproduce with the help of as much as 10 women yes he can reproduce just one man one male can fertilize 10 females or more given the ability he has, given the strength he has. But on the contrary, a woman cannot give birth to as much as 50 children, even with 50 men. Why? Because the woman has a limit to which she can conceive. A woman can conceive at least once or on rare conditions twice a year. But a man can impregnate more than one woman. Can impregnate 10 women in a year or more. So what that means is that if we have a population where we have two females, for instance, in two is to 10, in, in a ratio of 2 is to 10, it means that we have less females compared to the number of males. The impact it will have on the population is that the population in that country will be low. There's a particular country that the government was encouraging um, men to marry more women into the country to help populate the country. I read it somewhere. I don't know if it was true or false. So as to help the country attain what is called optimum population. Optimum population means the population that is convenient to utilize the resources of that country. Now, if we also have more females to male, by that ratio, you will discover that the tendency to multiply uh, birth will be higher compared to if we have more males to females. Number two, poor medical services. If a country is not having proper medical service, you will discover that that country will always have cases like stillbirth, infertility issues, etc., which will affect population negatively. True or false? Right. Now, number three, high rate of infant mortality. High rate of infant mortality. I have already explained what stillbirth is. This could also be as a result of poor medical services, where people don't know how to cater for, how to take care of a pregnant woman and all that, and along the line she loses her baby or sometimes uh, at delivery certain complications that set in if they are not managed properly they could lead to death of the babies and if a country is always having the recurrence of such instances it is known as high rate of infant mortality Mortality, I've already explained what it is. And then number four, poverty. When you can cater for yourself, you will think of catering for another person. True or false? Now, if you cannot feed yourself properly, you won't even want to marry. But if you can take care of yourself properly and you have more than enough to spare, you will consider getting married. From there, you will also consider having children. 
So poverty can affect the population size of a country negatively. Natural disasters is another factor. When you are in a country where there are earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, um, hurricanes, and tsunamis, and all those kind of natural disasters that cut human life short, or that kill people uh, uh, often, you will discover that that country will be less popular. Then number six is man-made disasters. Man-made disaster is artificial, meaning that it is caused by man, such as conflicts like wars, communal conflicts, uh, family issues, where people go as much as killing one another. When you are in war-torn regions, you will discover that the population in those countries are usually low as a result of high number of deaths. And then finally we have family planning and use, use of contraceptives or contraception. In a country where people are enlightened enough not to uh, give birth that they are not prepared for, you will discover that they will always go for family planning. A couple can decide to plan the number of child he or she wants to have. You see, there will be no accidental conception, which most people will allow because they believe God gives children and it cannot be controlled. But now there is knowledge about controlling the number of children you want to have. So when this knowledge comes in place in, in form of family planning, you will discover that people will no longer give birth to as many of uh, to as many as 10 or more children as it used to be. So this can impact negatively on the population size. Now that is it for birth rate. Let's look at the third broad factor that affects population size or growth. And that factor is called migration. What is migration? Migration is simply the movement of people from one geographical area to another. These movements sometimes can be permanent or temporary. People move to other countries or move from the rural areas to the urban areas or from cities to towns and, or villages, temporarily or permanently for various reasons best known to them. This can make a particular country or a particular geographical area to be highly populated or lowly populated. Now let us see the types of migrations we have. The types of migration we have are emigration and immigration. Emigration refers to the movement of people from one country to another country. In other words, movement of people outside the country. Movement of people out of a particular country. That is emigration, just like exports. In business studies, we were taught exports and imports. When people are exported to other countries, in other words, when people move out to other countries, it is emigration. But when people move into a particular country, it is known as immigration. Having known that now, let us look at forms of migration. The first form of migration is rural urban migration. Uh, of course, you know what rural areas are. Rural areas simply refers to underdeveloped places like villages uh, and small communities at the grassroots level. While the urban areas refers to big towns and cities, developed, well developed areas of a country. So when people migrate from the rural areas, the underdeveloped villages and communities, into uh, the big cities and towns. It is known as rural urban migration. And then secondly, when people move from villages to villages, it is known as rural to rural migration. When people now move from urban areas, developed towns and cities, 
to the villages. It is known as urban rural migration. When people move from cities to cities, that is towns to towns, it is known as urban to urban migration. And then when people move across countries, inter-country movements, it is known as international migration. And then finally we have seasonal migration. Seasonal migration is the type of migration that happens during special occasions, festive periods, like the Calabar festivals we used to have, like the Calabar carnival. When people move, migrate from Lagos, Port Harcourt, and various parts of the country to enjoy the experience here, it is known as seasonal migration because it happens once every year. When people move to attend festivals and other occasions in their villages or Christmas travels, etc. These are known as seasonal migration. This is where we will stop for now till we meet again in the next class. So, but before we go, I will like that you copy out an assignment for me, which you will submit. Take down. Okay, the first assignment question is state five advantages and disadvantages of large population. And then the second one is discuss five reasons why people migrate. Why do people move from one place to another? Give me five reasons and explain them. Do well to send them to me and if there are questions you would like to ask, indicate in your note. I will attend to them and send them back to you. Thank you very much till we see you again.